people think there's this government conspiracy that they'll never allow psychedelics to enter the healthcare landscape and really an industry that eventually, you know, isn't going to catch the eye of insurance companies and big pharma. What's your message to them? Hey everyone, welcome to the Trade of Black podcast. I'm your host, Shad Dales. Today we're talking psychedelics. We bring back a familiar face to the podcast. He is an award-winning filmmaker and he's the co-founder of Psychoceutical, which trades on the OTC under the ticker symbol B as in Bob, W, V as in Victor, I, Zappy, Zaplin. Is it okay to say Happy New Year as now it's towards the end of January? Where does time go? Yes, this is crazy. In psychedelic time, we're, we're moving light years ahead. Each day, each month seems like we move a light year. So good to be back. Yeah. Well, when you think about January, end of January, uh, probably the most challenging time of the year for a lot of North Americans related to mental health. Um, there has been a roaring start as far as research here in 2023. Maps coming out, promising data regarding the MDA. Small Pharma last week came up with some promising news regarding DMT. Um, what's your take, I guess, on, uh, first off, just the uh, the data that was produced uh, with what Maps announced a couple weeks back? Yeah, I'm so excited because, you know, mm. as insiders, we've known that this data has existed for now months and years in some cases, but it's really being brought yeah. to the forefront because we're post-pandemic People are having real mental health challenges, real addiction issues, and this is the way to fight back. The other stuff that we had pre-pandemic and for the last 50 years really hasn't worked. This is so good. You know, the MAPS data shows that after two months after the MDMA treatment, people like 60% of the people no longer had symptoms of PTSD. They no longer qualified as having PTSD anymore, wild. which is wild, wild, right? But what Rick Doblin told me was that one year later, it was even higher. So the results, yeah, higher. the results keep getting better and better and better over time. So how does that work? What are they doing between the two month and one year mark? They're continuing to take it or how does, how does that no. work? No, what's happening <clears throat> is that when you have a breakthrough psychedelic experience and you build new neural pathways about yourself in the present moment, going into the yeah. future, you don't, you evolve yourself. You don't have a lot of that baggage, a lot of the electrical charge to things that might've happened in the past. You're living in the present moment going forward. So in reality, what these psychedelics are doing is they're putting you in a neuroplastic state and you're able yeah. to, you know, change your lifestyle, change things in you, about your life that, you know, maybe you need to, but this gives you that window to go do it. But in the meantime, you're just building up more and more and more positive neuroplasticity in the brain. So you create a new lifestyle, um, new habits, as you form, as you said, form new neurons within the brain form. So you're saying whatever that pathway and lifestyle is only increases even that much more from say two months to say a year. Yeah. I'm saying that once you get rid of some of that background baggage, that may even be hereditary. It could be something in your DNA in your family lineage that isn't yeah. even yours. And you're having this reaction or you've built, you know, tracks in your mind about what you know you're a failure you're a drug addict and you run everything through that and what these psychedelics do is they put you in a neuroplastic state and they help you build new neural pathways where you're going forward in you know kind of a moment like hey i'm i'm okay and i want to see where this thing goes as opposed to you know living in that old paradigm that's the promise of psychedelics yeah. and when you do them the right ones in the right set and setting you keep a neuroplastic state so you're not so rigid so when things don't what happen right you know how you receive that and deal with it is much different than you otherwise would have and so yeah this is the, the beauty of psychedelics it's not like this is something that you're on like antidepressants the rest of your life every yeah. day and they build yeah. up in your brain you know, these are something that you might take on an occasional basis uh, under a medical setting or something you take uh, in a microdose form, uh, you know, weekly or, you know, every few times a week. This is totally different than changing your brain state with pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, uh, that are petroleum based, you know, things that are only really dealing with the symptoms. So this is why we're having such success and that's why it's yeah. I've never heard of anything after two months that was even more 
efficacious mm-hmm. a, at a year. I mean, this is only psychedelic medicine. Well, there were some good stories on NBC. I noticed recently, even CNBC, they're looking at the business side and what it could create. So it continues to educate people as far as mainstream, but even outside of mainstream, educating people in general, most importantly, trying to provide obviously alternative solutions. And I don't even want to say alternative solutions, different solutions from what we've been used to for the past 30 or 40 years. And like the last time we connected, we talked about how there's still this perception out there where people think there's this government conspiracy that they'll never allow psychedelics to enter the healthcare landscape and really an industry that eventually, you know, isn't going to catch the eye of insurance companies and big pharma. What's your message to them? Yeah, I have a completely opposite view of what's about to happen. And that's because I've been having these personal experiences with CEOs and with companies in the space, with politicians. Last week, I was with Mm -hmm. Governor Rick Perry down in Texas for a psychedelic event. That. Yeah, so the What did he say? What did he what was his re, what was his response to His re, his response was really cool, you know, <laughs> it's a lot about veterans, but he said, you know, my preconceived notions and how I feel about things do not trump other people's mental health and the fact that they may be suicidal or have an addiction. Like I have to get over it and it's more important that these people get medicine that can help than whatever my preconceived notion is. And that was really amazing to hear from him. And uh, he was just wide open because he knows in, in everybody's family, there's somebody suffering either mental health or addiction. Yeah. So none of us uh, avoid this and we have to have tools to battle it and uh, you know, bring people back from you know death to being a super productive member of society. And only way I've ever seen that happen is that somebody gets instantly more empathy from a major psychedelic experience. And when you emerge with more empathy and you can put yourself in other people's shoes, uh, you live your life differently. You may do your business differently, your relationships. That's why these things a year later, because, you know, you do more and more and more positive things for yourself a year later, that's going to exponentially build upon itself. So we should expect as this psychedelic renaissance happens right now psychedelics are hitting everything they're hitting business music fashion just like they did back in the 60s but then everything was clamped down in the 60s this is going to happen you're going to see you know hip hop music become <clears throat> higher conscious you're going to see fashion change business uh, opportunities and coopetition is really going to be the thing that you know, takes hold here now that we have, you know, things like, you know, um, AI and everything that's just changing the whole playing yeah. field. It's like, how are people supposed to handle this level of technology and information? They can't. We need some kind of a evolutionary leap forward. And that... And you think psychedelics will do that? Absolutely. 100%. This is how, wow. you know, according to some people, this is how the apes evolved into humans because they had that psychedelic experience uh with psilocybin mushrooms out in the field and and that caused a a leap in the brain capacity and things like that so we're gonna see this hit culture um you know i'm excited because like as a business person i really believe we have to change the medical approach that's being taken with psychedelics we have to make these psychedelics more like the medical establishment expects them to be yeah of course and so let me ask you something for people that are watching this right now that they say wow this guy's getting way too far ahead of himself ai psychedelics um what's your response to that what what's educate them on why you feel that way yeah well you know the, the the key is that you know uh you have these ancient technologies of nature where we know all the cures most drugs are based on natural plants and compounds and so yale university johns hopkins all these top institutions have done incredible work on psychedelics and right now frankly psychedelics for mental health and addiction is the only positive story we have in society so Mm -hmm. i would say to those people that in the same way that probably people were, you know, afraid of the automobile or people were originally afraid of the internet. And they said, oh, nobody's ever going to buy anything over the internet worth more than $20 or all those things that you heard as you you think it's going to have this, this much of an impact on people's lifestyles across the world. Like, do you think this will have this, this, this kind of impact of like, 
everyday life uh, when it comes to the social aspect, business aspect, all that stuff? Yeah, I really do. And I say that because psychedelics make all of that stuff better. They make it more tolerable and they make it so that a human being can handle all this information and technology. And so I say we're living in this empathy crisis right now where people don't have empathy. They can, they want to care about people, but they can't put themselves in other people's shoes. And when you do psychedelics, it brings you back to the miracle that we're in number one. And then number two, it raises your empathy level. And if we have enough people with enough empathy, we could solve any problem we have as a society. So for me, when I see the war in Ukraine, I don't go, Oh, how do I fix that? I say, we got to get a million doses of ketamine over to Poland right now because these people have PTSD and ketamine is shown to break suicidal ideation, depression, anxiety, addiction. And that's what these people need to heal uh, if, we, they, if we want them to come back in the way that we all want them to come back. So this is the solution to everything. Uh, the more people we get to have that experience and emerge with more empathy, that's when we begin to do really important work uh, together as a society. Yeah. Chad Harmon, your CEO of Psychoceuticals, has an extensive background in history working in the insurance business. Uh, first thing, insurance companies. I want to understand the business side of this and people that are getting into the space because their companies are going to have to show a pathway to revenue. So whether you're in the clinical model, drug development is a completely different game. You got to have a lot of money to obviously advance. You have to have diversification. That's into the hundreds of millions of dollars. I only see a couple of companies actually lasting within this industry because there's very few and probably a lot of people know who they are as far as raising that kind of money. But as far as the everyday clinical model, taking compounds, that sort of thing, insurance companies want to look for data. They want to look at cost. So if you're new to the industry, when you're walking into some of these clinics, a session could be a couple hundred, if not a thousand dollars per session, because you're sitting down with assisted therapy like a, a psychiatrist. So how exactly does the insurance model uh, get in and work as far as a business based on a lot of the feedback that Chad's have been having discussions? Yeah. With? And, and before I go into, you know, psychoceutical itself, I want to tell you that the exciting part for me is that as powerful as the pharmaceutical companies are, and as much as people think that they might be holding back some of this progress, it's not the case. They will sell whatever it is that they can sell. What's happening is as strong as they are, even stronger than them is the health insurance companies, the guys who are paying for the medicine, the United Healthcare's, the Kaisers, these people. And I've had personal sit downs with the top people at those companies and they've said, we're sick of paying for the stuff that doesn't work. We're not going to pay for antipsychotics, talk therapy, people going to an emergency room having a panic attack on Saturday night. If $2 worth of ketamine can help these people, they have side-by-side -side tests going right now in Austin, Texas with ketamine and S-ketamine, which is this very expensive medication covered by insurance that Johnson & Johnson has. These pharmaceutical, these health insurance companies don't want to pay anymore. They're doing side by sides and they, and they've already said to the insurance companies, if psilocybin mushroom microdosing can eliminate all these antidepressants and lower all these costs of healthcare, get to it right now. And the pharmaceuticals are doing so it's amazing time, but so you're seeing this and hearing this based on conversation. Yeah. These are chief, uh, research officers. These are uh, senior executives uh, in the C-suite, CEOs and people like that. That's how important this is to the next, their, their future. They know this is a trillion dollar industry wow. at some point. So they're figuring out how, you know, how does this affect us now, five years from now, 10, 25 right. years. So back to psychoceutical, um, you know, psychoceutical was developed to bring uh, things that could work in far that work in pharma over to the psychedelic space so that we could more easily dose patients and all the promises that we need we need these compounds to look more like a pharmaceutical and for the medical establishment to understand the half-life and all these things of these compounds so psychoceutical is going starting our clinical trials on our neuro direct ketamine and as many people know, right. ketamine is the only FDA approved psychedelic right now. It's not a hallucinogenic. Important for viewers to know yep, that. It's a dissociative and it's a, the number one anesthetic used by oral surgeons on children because it's very fast acting, it's very safe and it wears off quickly. 
What happened was they were doing amputations in the battlefield in Vietnam and they look back after the war and the people that got ketamine as their anesthetic hadn't committed suicides at the same rates as everybody else. So they were like, Are you yeah, serious? yeah, they were like, what's going on wow. here? They did bring it to Yale University. They do a huge study and they come up with ketamine, low dose ketamine is 70 plus percent effective against even treatment resistant depression. Now, so. Yeah, Wow. Yeah. So let me take it one step further. Like you said, you go into a clinic, it's going to cost hundreds of dollars and thousands because this is stuff is being done off label right now because it doesn't have the sanctioning of the FDA for this to be on label like they will very soon. But what we've done at Psychoceutical is we've taken a patent that works over in pharma. And what you do is you put the ketamine at the back of the neck, at the base of the hairline, topical ketamine right there like no place else on the body it goes directly to the okay. nerve tissue into the brain and it avoids your whole uh the systemic aspect of your body your stomach your liver so you don't get the psychedelic effect of the ketamine you don't get the nausea the dizziness but you do get an immediate calming effect and in the hours after, it metabolizes into hydroxynorketamine and builds those neural pathways in your brain. So now, without having a psychedelic so me, experience, me, a lot, everybody can, can get to this. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Can I touch on that? Because I think a lot of people, including myself, I've never had a psychedelic experience. It interests me. You know, everybody wants to improve, obviously, their mental health. We've all been down that road where dark roads actually make stronger people, but man, it would be nice obviously to have certain situations that you could actually uh, improve your life even more without actually knowing about it. But what I mean by that is, do we look at um, this whole psychedelic experience for some as being very um, overwhelming and a little like nerve wracking, so to speak? So with what you're describing, you still get the same end goal, which is calm, new neurons being created without a psychedelic experience. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, exactly. And basically, this is the promise that we have now because I, what I like about the moment we're in is that you don't have to go down this path and try to be the person that you know takes this compound and makes it relevant for this condition. There's things that already work like delivery systems like that psychoceutical has that they brought over to psychedelics. And so we can take all the knowledge we have about what's happened in pharma and apply it here. So mm -hmm. okay. psychoceutical, we're starting our clinical trials. We're gonna be in human trials in uh, the middle of March with our neurodirect ketamine because ketamine is already known to be safe and effective so we really you know we've already have the patent for putting any neuroactive compound at the back of the neck right here and we've had people come to us with who've done their own studies using uh you know lsd topical at the back of the neck for migraines and had incredible things and other compounds but what we're doing is because ketamine is legal now we are going for neurodirect ketamine so that people can go to work they can drive their car they can be elderly a kid somebody like yourself you don't have to have that ketamine psychedelic experience. You just put a little topic on there. A minute or so later, you feel this very relaxed state, but you're still able to go do business, drive a car, and it lasts right. for hours and hours. I mean, I'm gonna say many hours, and we're, we're proving this out because we want every emergency room, every doctor's office to have this, and before somebody goes in on antidepressants or you know down that path of talk therapy and all those things, you're going to be in that emergency room or your doctor's office. They're going to put the neurodirect ketamine there, calm you down, let you leave with that, prescribe it. Now you go home, you rub it on your neck, and you don't have to have doctors and all kinds of people monitoring you. Because as you know, probably, but Chad, I want to make one point because you're in Canada. Up in Alberta, they made this announcement about uh, psilocybin yeah. being legal and everybody's like, oh, that's so awesome. But if you read the fine print, it says you have to have two doctors with you during it. It's like, that's absurd. Two doctors, like that's cost prohibitive for everybody, unnecessary. And like, that's why I'm standing here in front of the, sitting here in front of the Mind Army sign because not only do we need legalization right now, but we're not going to put up with people who don't even know because again, doctors don't really know about nutrition, which could solve a lot don't of Don't get problems. me started yeah. on the direction of this country. Yeah. Don't get me started. I think there's a lot of Canadians that are in the same boat as me right now, but 
that's actually interesting information that's you know misleading to say yeah. the least it's like buying a subscription and they renew it annually without your knowledge and just renew your credit card there's like a story within the story <clears throat> that a lot of people will go missing but yeah um can i that's can i can i say one more thing about the um about the insurance go side ahead. of this thing what I love about the NeuroDirect Academy and in and what's going on there is that, you know, like you said, Chad comes from decades in the insurance yeah. space. So when he was analyzing psychedelics, he said to himself, I'm not going to do anything unless I think it's something that the insurers will pay for. So when he saw NeuroDirect Ketamine and the fact that, you know, this is an opportunity for it to be topical, take home, you don't need the doctors, all these things. He was like, as the former payer and all that stuff, he's like, I, this is what I'm looking for in the marketplace. So we know that, you know, if we can save these companies a lot of money by putting people on NeuroDirect Ketamine first, so they don't have a panic attack, they don't need to go on antidepressants and they don't need to you know, have talk therapy all the time. Uh, if they have a ketamine and they're feeling good and some of the people that were anecdotally that are getting the NeuroDirect ketamine that we're now about to do the clinical trials come March, that some of these people, they're homebound. They haven't held a job in 20 years. They can't. And they use the NeuroDirect ketamine and they've been able to go out on their own and within you know days, weeks to be out and have a job. And their family is just like in shock. And how is this even possible? This is the power of ketamine. And this is the power I believe of NeuroDirect ketamine to be the first way you try it. So somebody like yourself or a kid or an elderly person doesn't have to have some type of psychedelic effect to get the benefit of this incredible compound of ketamine. Hell of a spokesman. I love the way you sell your story. <laughs> well, you know, I got kids, so I I need this to happen. I want the world to be a better Listen, place. I want I want to bring this back where it's like, let me ask you a question, and I, I know where you're going with this, but um, where you're what you're probably going to say to this, but do you think, based on the conversations that you've had with insurance companies and big pharma companies up until this point, that they are now seeing that this will upend? the existing pharmaceutical uh, drug treatment. Um. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I've set out to help them, you know, and to in their, they've doing their own studies, but what I've tried to do, I've got a company in, uh, in Utah and it's called Hemp Lucid. It's a CBD company. I was able to get their senior management to have a ketamine experience with the doctor to tune them into what the opportunity was. And once they realized for themselves the benefits that they were having, not only in their mental health, but also in being in a peak performance state, they started offering this as an HR service of the company. Because what I think is happening is, it used to be before the pandemic, if somebody worked for you, uh, you know, the expectation was that they were gonna take care of their own mental health and their own private life. But now, post pandemic, right. everybody, you know, you have all these people working virtually and it's your problem. So you need to make sure they're okay. For some of these companies, you know, and, and Hemp yeah. Lucid, they gave it to, you know, 30 plus people in the company and they're having incredible, um, you know, business success. But, you know, you look at a Wall Street trading firm, if one of your guys is having a mental situation and he could be helped with psychedelic medicine and he's gonna make you another $100 million this year, you know, then give it to him as an HR. Don't wait around for, you know, it to be covered Good for point. insurance. <clears throat> yeah. We touched on the, the, the top of the podcast, um, recent results regarding maps. I've asked this, I've spoken to quite a few reputable people in the industry based on previous conversations. Do you think MDMA will be legalized in the next 12 months? I do. Absolutely. Um, because of the efficacy that MAPS has already shown and the dedication of the, that group and the fact that they are able to bring forward large sums of money to do whatever they need, I would say yeah. yes. Um, I want to reference a tie because I know last week there was like some negative blowback a week or so ago on a tie. One of their clinical trials did not go the way that they wanted it to go. And I say, I said, you know, that's going to happen. You know, a tie has probably six or seven or more drugs in different various stages of development. And so, yeah, one of them's not going to go well, but one of them's going to be probably a home run. And so I still look at a tie like it's a mutual fund well, of opportunities. 
Yeah, we had an interview with Christian about a week and a half ago. And uh, for all the viewers, if you want to see more details on that interview, you can go onto our playlist. And uh, it's titled, uh, What Next for a Tie? But he basically outlines about how it's not like the trial is completely done. There's tweaks that need to be done. A higher dosage will then take place. But the end goal is still very much could happen with what they're trying to achieve. But I think if anything, <clears throat> we're learning about how biotech works. Investors got into this space and thinking it was the next cannabis run. I think what we're seeing now is maybe even a bigger opportunity in psychedelics. It's just the road that we're going down and the route that we're taking is completely different <clears throat> than, say, cannabis. And I was speaking to CEO of Numinous, uh, Peyton Nyquist, last week. I don't know if you were at the J.P. Morgan Health Conference, but he's like, look, we just keep telling the story. And through time and education... It's like you say the same thing today as you did 12 months ago, but now people are starting to have that aha moment. And that kind of goes back to what originally why we wanted to connect again with you was based on your LinkedIn, where it's just like this isn't a government conspiracy. This is about collecting data. And right now, based on, and you've talked about it with your CEO having an insurance background, the conversations are taking place with both big pharma and insurance companies as to how this is going to work. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's playing out perfectly. I mean, I was all, I was wondering yeah. before the pandemic, how is this psychedelic medicine ever going to come out and, you know, and help in the way that it can? And here we are post pandemic. And I think, you know, from the insurance companies and the health insurance companies themselves who know that there's promise here to the pharmaceutical companies uh you know right on down to the companies it's like this is the best time ever to get involved in this industry it's very similar to when i got involved in the domain name space i was buying domains like beer.com and credit cards.com uh Smart. thank you and but that in the 2000 when the bubble burst on the internet everybody was like oh that's it you know and this is not going to happen for blah 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 and i looked at it and i thought wow i'm using email more than ever i'm shopping online like i don't think the internet's going anywhere and i double i doubled down and all the you know the garbage of the early you know, um, exuberance of companies that shouldn't even be, exist. Uh, all that stuff sh shook out during that time. And it just shook out of the psychedelic industry. The only people who are left are players that have legit IP, good management teams and the ability to raise yep. money. That's yep. it. If you don't have that, you know, there's you do something else with your time. But, you know, because this is going to be a trillion dollar industry, psilocybin microdoses are going to replace antidepressants ketamine's going to yeah. you know cure ptsd on and on uh ibogaine for addiction you know that is it's so big that we just have to continue to move forward and educate people just like they do with the automobile and the internet that you know this is going to change their life and <clears> they just have to be patient and uh you know as a as a business person i think you got to be patient but if you're wasting your time with something that's not going to get covered by insurance you know it's just a waste of time you know, go for something like you know we have at psychoceutical with neurodirect where you can help the whole industry because the best advice i got when i was starting into this industry was from mike milken the famous financier philanthropist okay. he gave me my first yep. job on wall street at drexel burnham and i told him about psychedelics and he started to send people to me for actual physical healing and when i showed him the information and the research he got excited and he said hey zappy he's like why don't you go out and find some intellectual property that could help the whole industry and that's what you need to spend your time on. And I did that for a couple of years. And when I realized what Chad Harmon and the psychoceutical team had, I was like, these are amazing technologies that work in pharma that we get to bring chaperone over to the psychedelic space and make microdosing and dosing possible and take the psychedelic effect out and bring these things to market now. So for me, uh, this is a fulfillment of like co-op creating co-opetition where we can license our technology to all these companies in the industry a tie numinous we've spoken to all their ceos and their science teams and all of them have said hey we'd love to use psychoceuticals delivery right. patents to to more accurately dose people during our clinical trials and once our drugs are available we still have to we want to give as little as possible and have as much effect as possible right. so great times chad this is it you know, if you're in any other industry, you're probably wasting your time. Interesting.
psychedelic industry a trillion dollar business you think so yeah absolutely antidepressants addiction and pain alone never mind even peak performance and all that uh is a trillion dollars wow and you're having these conversations with insurance and big pharma companies they see this coming yeah these are really smart people i mean they've been watching the research for years but uh, until the till there were alternatives, because prior to even S ketamine coming out, there weren't necessarily any alternatives to ketamine. And so now that they're seeing research coming out on on psilocybin, on DMT, on MDMA, uh, it's you know they're excited. Uh, I think you know as soon as the commercialization happens with Compass Pathways. So I think MDMA will become uh, legal, like you said, but as soon as Compass Pathways commercializes the first psychedelic medicine, that's when the institutional boom is going to happen. And that's when we go exponentially from where we are today, which is large, to that trillion dollar industry. It's going to happen really fast. And that timeline wise, if everything goes promising is later this year. So I'm anxious to see where we will be one year from now having this conversation. But listen, appreciate the update. Good chatting with you. Uh, enjoy Miami. I know I need a better tan. Uh, you're sporting it, buddy. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. 2023 is here. And right now, a lot of uncertainty pertaining to the markets, especially new emerging industries like crypto, cannabis, psychedelics and more. So leave a comment below and let us know who you want us to interview. What are the questions that you want asked? And most importantly, what's the information that you want to learn? Once we produce these videos, then share this to your network, subscribe to our channel, and click on that bell for all notifications because we would not be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.